from uh, the beginning here and wants to start from the beginning. We have uh, other people with serious expertise. So uh, um, maybe a little bit about me. Uh, so I've been uh, at this now uh, for 15, 20 years. Um, and uh, mostly I've been uh, doing uh, genetics in the mouse uh, this time, uh, for all this time. But um, in the past little while, the past uh, four, five, six years, uh, I'm actually trying to get my lab out of genetics. Uh, it's gotten a little bit too crowded and, frankly, a little bit too easy. Um, and uh, we decided to take up a challenge to uh, see what we could do about uh, improving the current state of affairs with animal models of pain. I guess you can see uh, by the title that uh, fundamentally I'm a little bit pessimistic. Um, but uh, I, but I, I think that's overstating how pessimistic I am. The, the, the animal models, uh, are they, they have some problems, at least uh, a, a certain segment of the uh, academic uh, pain research community and the industry community uh, thinks there's some problems, but um, there are ways that current models can be improved, uh, and uh, there's a case to be made for uh, trying to develop fundamentally new models. And so what I'm uh, going to try to do this afternoon is to uh, start off um, uh, after a brief uh, introduction uh, to, the, to the issue, uh, start off by describing uh, essentially the panoply of current models, uh, show you what they... What they um, commercial equipment looks like uh, to run these models. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, things, uh, ways in which these models uh, can be used better. So uh, ways to increase the sophistication of their use, uh, factors that can uh, influence the data that you get from uh, these models that uh, a lot of people uh, um, continue to ignore. Uh, interestingly, I should point out, it's that when I say people continue to ignore, I'm mostly blaming academics uh, here. I, I get the impression uh, that industry has uh, learned some of these lessons uh, a lot better than uh, my academic colleagues have. Um, and then finally, uh, I'm going to make the case that perhaps it's time to throw the baby out with the bathwater entirely um, and to uh, uh, switch over to completely new uh, models uh, that work in completely different ways. Uh, and we have a few examples um, uh, of unpublished data uh, where we think we've come up with fundamentally new animal models with some uh, interesting uh, properties and, and potentially more clinically relevant that I'd like to tell you about. So that, that's the plan, but that being said, uh, if we don't get to the end, this is perfectly fine with me. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I encourage you, uh, whether you have something to add because of your great experience in this domain or whether you think I've uh, uh, brushed over something uh, uh, far too lightly and you want to go into, uh, into it in more detail, please, please interrupt me at any time. Uh, with questions or tangents or whatever you want to do. The more interactive this is, the, the more fun it's going to be. So are we ready? Okay, um, I'm not going to belabor this point too much. You all realize that uh, in the past while, we've come a long way uh, in increasing our sophistication uh, of the biology of pain. So we've gotten to a point uh, where we have, uh, you know, the subcortical pathways pretty much down pat. Uh, we know a fair amount of the neurochemistry involved in those pathways. We know a fair amount of the signal transduction. Uh, pathways going on within uh, the uh, particular uh, uh, neurons uh, that are part of this pathway, not to mention the glial cells that are interacting with those neurons. Um, and even more recently, of course, uh, using cortical imaging, uh, we have uh, come to a pretty good knowledge uh, of the anatomy of pain uh, cortically, uh, if not the neurochemistry. Um, in short, there's been an explosion of basic science knowledge. Okay? I, there, no one could deny that. Um, and, and, it's, and the pace of that explosion is accelerating, right? So we really, really have a lot more to play with uh, in terms of molecules uh, now than we did 5, 10, 15, and 20 years ago. However, um, we have, and 